Hello, and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 136, brought to you most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern Time. We're your hosts, Anton and... Marwa. Hi, Anton. Hi, Marwa. Good to see you again this week. Um, well, as people know, we give a tip in just five minutes. Uh, this tip, I think we're really going to actually hit five minutes without any trouble, uh, though we can talk on any topic for way too long, I'm sure. But we'll try to do this one in, in just five minutes. And I think it'll be easy because um, this tip is actually very similar to and based upon a tip we gave episode 86. Um, hey, Pradash. Uh, and episode 86, most people have all the, the episodes memorized. I'm sure you do, Maro, right? What was episode well, 86? Almost, almost. It was about cataclysmic failure messages that you changed. That's right. So, so um, the the episode was exactly that about cataclysmic failure messages, and we did things like we were were able to change this message. Normally, this would say contact your administrator, but we changed it to say for our company, we we would want people to contact the Insum superhero Mishka at Mishka uh, at Insum.ca, ask her to check the debug ID, etc. So, do you remember how we did this? Yes, actually, um, we created a text message in the shared component of our application and has the name Apex Contact Admin Debug. Yes, right. and the text, text messages message section. And that's great. That's and that was the tip. But how, how do we how do we know that's the string to use? Um, you, you actually created a blog post talking about this, and there is a link there to the list of multiple Apex text messages that you can look through for the one that you want to change. So All right, so now we're ready for today's tip, right? And so let me pick yes. up the timer before we go any farther and cheat anymore. Um, so exactly right. That is that is the list, and this is still available, this, this blog post. Um, but today's tip is that you can do a whole lot more than the cataclysmic uh, messages, right? You can change just about any string that Apex um, that Apex generates, right? And this is a list of all of the things that you can change. Um, yeah, right. Um, is it documented somewhere in Oracle or? Right. <laughs> I'm telling you, you can use all these, but yeah. So there is documentation on a lot of the strings. So right here, you can have all these internal messages. So if you if you were to come out and look for them, you'll find a lot of them. But the truth is not all of them. The, there's a lot in here and you'll find all of these in my list, but my list is more comprehensive. And I'll say, I think it's easier to, to search my list as well. If you're looking for a username, you can just, you know, use your your interactive grid things. Yes, right. you can make filters here and find the text message that you want to change. And in fact, I can see that you already played with some of the messages, text messages on this page, like the action button of the report, things you can do. Right, so you can do lots of things. Vertical Actions. things, coffee filter, right? You can check out the deets. Oh, so. wow. You got little pretty pictures, right? So all kinds of things you can do. Um, so I actually, so a lot of these are silly, but this one I actually like. This normally says reports or report, but I think save reset makes a lot more sense here. Right? Yes, it does. Definitely. Right. Um, but what if I wanted to change download to something else? How would I go about doing that? Uh, well, we need to create text message and shared component, but before doing that, we need to find the name of that text message so we can look for download in, the, in this report. So right here. Um, and so there's a lot of things with download in it. I happen to know that it's going to start with Apex IR, but I could change this from uh, inside to equals because that one was, in fact, a specific word. I can get it down a little smaller and I, got, I get Apex IR download. So let's go ahead and do it really quickly. We'll go to our app builder, shared components, text messages. We'll create a text message, Apex IR download, and we'll put save this stuff. Um, and that should do it. Um, and don't forget to turn on the used in JavaScript switch, Anton. All right. Many of these, yes, that gets created on the fly. So there we go. Used in JavaScript. I'll create that text message. We'll refresh this screen and 
if we did it right, it should say, save this stuff. Exactly. Great. Excellent. So, Marwa, the way I built this was I, this interactive report is simply, um, uh, is simply the, this query right here. It's from Apex Application Translations. But most people aren't going to be able to run this query because the applications you need, it, the application you need really is 4470. But um, I'm doing between 4000 and 5000 because every version of Apex can change sometimes. But you need to have the Apex administrator role in as part of the parsing schema. So you would need to grant this to the parsing schema. Not everybody can do this. So that's why I've made this a public page. Um, yes. Um, and so uh, this one, this page um, does exactly that. We can see the messages. Um, and I think we need to make sure not to override those text messages because when we create our own a text message in shared components of our application, we need to make sure not to use mm -hmm. uh, a text message that's used by Apex. Right. So if I created my own t translatable message called Apex File Browse, but I'm not going to create something with that kind of a name, right? Yeah, right. But believe me, there are other names like access denied, account blocked, oh, yes, oh, right. <laughs> and even so, AMPM. Right. So I, if I created my own called account locked, I would override the Apex one throughout the application. Exactly. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, do you have any other favorites? Yes. The one that says built with love. So this I one like right here so controls this right here. Fantastic. I like it so much. So I'm going to show that really quickly. If we come over here, all I did was I took the normal message and I changed it to expertly crafted. And I kept the same percent zero and percent one that was there. And there we have it. That's today's tip. Um, Great. You can change your own. Um, I, I assume people know how to turn this on, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show how to turn on this line right here. Um, to turn that line on, you go to the application itself, you edit the application definition, uh, go to user interface, and there's the uh, add built with Apex to the footer. Um, and so that adds, that adds this message, but normally that message just says built with love using Apex. And we, we tweaked it just a little bit uh, there. Yes. Um, so, so does it change them by application or by workplace? It's by, by application. So if you, if you have three applications and you want your applications to each have these, you have to do it in each one of those applications. Um, it's uh, a little bit interesting um, that uh, who, who has filed the enhancement request to make the name on that screen be a drop down. The name on which screen? Um, you meaning this screen? Oh, but this you can you can have your own. This shouldn't be a drop down. Um, this I think Rich is asking in this screen right here. Um, this name you can create your own. I can have um, something like send in some. This is all about trans. This is mostly, uh, and this would be in English. This would be send. Uh, in some email, but if I wanted to, so I would create multiples, one for this, and then I would do another one in French. What, how would I say send in some email in French? It would be something like. Envoyer un email à Insum. Envoyer. Yeah. Envoyer. Okay. I don't know how to spell it. Yes. But so, so these, these are, these are seemingly generic, but they're not truly generic because you, you, um, there are a whole bunch that you're going to override the, the the um, internal ones. And interestingly, you can access these internal messages um, without actually creating them. So for example, um, one that I haven't created, let's just pick uh, this right here, right? If I, if I use Apex, um, if I come in here uh, and just use this uh, in, well, here, let me just do it. I'll do it in SQL Workshop really quickly. Um, now we're way past five minutes, but the tip is over. This is this is answering questions. Uh, message dot uh, apex laying dot message. So if I haven't overridden it, if I haven't put written it, um, the message from dual, I'll actually get 
I actually get it. So like in my own application, if I use this, I can get, I can pull out the, the translations based upon all of these messages. Um, uh, is there a way to add the application version to the footer? There is definitely a way to add the application version to the footer. Um, the, um, well, um, and I assume that the question there is about this version right here, um, right here. So if I have, I don't even remember where the version is. There's somewhere in here that we define, we can add the version. Do you remember where it is, Marwa? I'm trying to think. I used it before, and there is an attribute that we can change to mention the version of our application. Oh, it's right. There it is. It's the fourth okay. one. Exactly. Right. You can reference this um, uh, um, in using... Uh, <laughs> thanks, Michelle. Uh, you can reference this version number um, using ampersand. I think it's app version dot. I think. Um, <laughs> so many people tell me, right? You can, I think it's app version dot, but I'm not 100% sure. But what you could do um, is you could you could certainly uh, um, reference it. And I think, I'm not 100% sure, but let's just try it. Um, app version dot. If I go to page one and I put this um, here, amper, uh, let's do it here. Ampersand app version dot. We'll see if that actually does it. Um, no, it didn't. It, there is a there is a reference to it and I can't remember, maybe it's just version dot, but you probably could do it within that. Mm. Well, we only had five minutes, but there is a way to reference it. Uh, um, so there's definitely a way. Let's see, change built in Apex string or create my own should be choices. And if you try create one, Sorry, there it should not leave. I, oh, I agree with that, Rich. I think I think there should be a better way to do this than um, than what I'm talking about here. I, I I agree there should be, but this is in this version. This is this is the way you do it. Um, uh, certainly, you could you can change this footer to be anything you want. So you could turn this footer on, and you could just change this to have your version number. You know, you could just change the Apex love and you can put anything you want here. You can put your version number. Oh, this release 1.0 um, is here. Oh, it's already there. So here's the question. Can you put it in the footer? It's, it's already there. It's already there in the footer, right? <laughs> All right. Um, but there is a way to reference it. I just don't recall what it is um, at the moment. All right. Well, so Marwa, we have well exceeded our five minutes. Um, yeah, I know. If you just look at the footer code. So I have to go. Okay. So. If we come here and we go to templates and we took the take the um, standard page template, um, which is here, and we go footer. to the footer, uh, we're gonna find footer. it. Uh, footer, 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 uh, release message, additional info. Um, uh, oh, that's the error page template. Where's my footer? Uh, page footer. All right. Well, okay. I don't want to spend uh, I don't want to spend my whole time looking through all of this, but oh, there it is, footer, form close, uh, success message, uh, app, oh, version, app version, I've seen it. App version, I saw right. it, right? It's but app version. It's app version as a substitution string here. All right, so yes, but it's already there. So let's just say um, it was in here somewhere. That's the header, the body. Oh my goodness. And built with love using Apex, and then right above that app version. There we go. Okay. So, whew. All right. All right. So I have one more thing, though. Um, and this is our, you know, if you like the video, do all that stuff. But here we go. Marwa, we just had this conversation. Uh, you do, when you're writing a date, you write the date as something like, um, uh, you would write a date and I, oh, I don't want to change this. Uh, type here. Can I do this? Okay. So you would write the date something like today would be 15 March 2024, right? Is that right? right? And yes. Mark, 
Mark mentioned he would write it March 15th, 2024, if he was writing out a date, right? But do you know how I would write the date? No. I would just do 314, 315. That's, That's it. Yep. I mean, if I wanted the year, I'd put the year on there, but it would, I would do 315. Okay. So what was yesterday? Yesterday was 314. So here in the United States, yesterday was a huge day of celebration. Do you know why? Pi day. Oh, pi day. Oh, pie day. that's great. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> So here we go in, in honor of Pi Day, we, uh, you know, we have this Pi in honor of Pi Day. So we were able to change even the labels in here. So, um, oh, that's great. Even the labels here and the pretty pictures yeah. Pi in honor of Pi Day. That's awesome. So, so yesterday was Pi Day. I hope everybody got some pie, but it's not too late. You can always celebrate Pi Day a day late. Um, exactly. All right. There we go. That's all I have. Um, we'll see everybody next week. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.